So when we go to Romans 16, we start off the chapter here with the Apostle Paul uh, naming people, telling them to greet them in the Lord. And what's fascinating here is we see, just like everywhere else in Scripture, we see here too that the Scriptures, the Bible, demonstrates itself to be the Word of God, just like it says in the London Baptist Catechism of the 1600s. The Bible demonstrates itself to be the Word of God, and you see here the names of people written down. Greet this person, greet that person in the Lord. And what's fascinating about this is when you compare these names, you, you see that there's names that we don't use today. That's why you, we have a hard time pronouncing them. Right? They were names that were perhaps only used in the, in the Greek language at that time period and mostly at that time. And if we compare the percentages of the names used, how many times they're used in the Bible, we see that the percentage of the, how many people are named that back then and how many people are named that name in the Bible. When you compare history, say the history that we know by tomb engravements or history books that were written back then or documents from back then, we compare them to Scripture and we see the percentages match exactly. Now, if you consider, say, the Gnostic books that were written at a later date, the books of the heretics, of false teachers, and you make the same comparisons, they don't match. Fascinating. Now, even if we were to know nothing of history, though, just the very nature of the passage shows us that these are real people living in the real time, and Paul is writing to them. And this is not just stuff that he's making up out of thin air. The scriptures themselves demonstrate themselves to be the Word of God. And here we see just the glory of God demonstrated, even in these passages where we think, oh, it's just names. But it's not. And then we go on to the next section where Paul starts off saying, Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn, and turn away from them. Turn away from them. Brothers and sisters, the Bible does not teach us that we have to be nice to everybody. That is a false teaching. Yes, we are to be nice to God's sheep when the time is appropriate. Sometimes they need rebuke too, right? But the Bible does not teach us to be nice to everybody. And especially here, look at what it says. Those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn. What does it say? Keep your eye on them. Right? Keep your eye on those who cause dissensions. Mark them out. And then what? Turn away from them. They are your enemies. They are not your friends. You are not to treat them as your friends. You are not to talk to them nicely. You are not to be polite with them. You are to turn away from them. Now those are strong words, right? You see... Look in Matthew 23, if you want a, a clear example of this. How did Jesus talk to the Pharisees? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, is how he starts off. And the rest you can read for yourself. There are some people who are wolves in sheep's clothing, and we must rebuke them openly, we must avoid them, and we must not welcome them in the church. Now it goes on, for such men are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. And see what they do, they try to flatter you. They come in, oh, you're so good at this, you're good at that, you're a good person. Uh, don't listen to that preacher there, who, who, you, you know. Don't listen to your pastor, they don't know anything, you know better than them. Maybe they'll start off like that. And then they'll use that as a way to introduce their heresy. They'll bring in something through the back door. If you see people like that, brothers and sisters, first of all, you need to know the Word of God. 
And I know that many of you, some of you, by your own admission, are not reading this every day. How are you supposed to be able to discern who is a false teacher and who is not? If you do not read this every day, if you do not know it, you are defenseless. You are like a duck sitting, a sitting duck with his feathers cut off. You will not know how to tell. You will not know the signs of a false teacher. And that's why it says they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. And there's a lot of unsuspecting people in the world today. They just assume that everybody out there is a nice person, is generally good at heart. But if you know Romans 1 to 3, you know all are in rebellion against God until they turn to Christ. And even then, they still have sin that they commit from time to time. Now let's read on. For the report of your obedience has reached to all. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Now I want to point out, look at what it says here. What is peace? The God of peace. The very God of peace is going to commit a violent act and crush Satan under his feet. Under our feet. You see, peace in the scriptures is not the kind of peace that the world sells to you. It's not the fake peace that tells you just to be, you know, make peace with those. I mean, let me just take Karen State for example. You make peace with the Burmese even while they're still holding a gun game at, at your head. Is that peace? Right? It's not. We all know it's not. And so, you know, the God of peace is not the God who says peace, peace when there is no peace. No, he's not just going to make a peace treaty with the devil. He's not just going to speak nice with him so that maybe there will be peace between God and Satan. He's not just going to try to make things work out. No, he's going to crush Satan under your feet. Under your feet. You see, true peace is a peace that fights. It is a peace that crushes evil. It is a peace that tramples the kingdom of the evil one underfoot. It is a peace that destroys and tears down lies. It is a peace that has absolute victory. A victory that is won for all God's elect people on the cross. That is our peace, brothers and sisters. Not the cheap peace that the world is giving you or selling to you. That peace is a lie. The peace that we have was paid at the price, at the cost of the blood of the Son of God. Now, let me just go back for a few moments on the subject of causing dissensions. You see, the devil and false teachers will always blame division on those who preach the truth. They will always do so. And that's why 500 years ago, you know what happened with Martin Luther. And people accused Martin Luther of dividing the church. Luther, you're dividing the church with your message. But if you have a mind that knows the scriptures and thinks like God thinks, you know that's not the case. It is not Martin Luther who divided the church. It's the false teachings of the Roman Catholic Church that divided the church. It's the anathemas of the Council of Trent. If you want to see for yourself, go read the anathemas written in the sixth session of the Council of Trent. That's where the division comes from. It's from the Pope excommunicating Luther for speaking the truth. It's the sellers of indulgences that were causing division. It's not the speakers of truth. And it's the same example we see in the Bible where Ahab comes to Elijah and says, Oh, is it you, the troubler of Israel? Is this you, the troubler of Israel? And what does Elijah say? Is it not I who is troubling Israel, but you and your father's house, causing people to turn away from the true God and follow after the Baals 
after the idols. You are the ones who are troubling Israel. And you know what? We have trouble, troublers like that, like Ahab in Canada too. I'll name them. Our Prime Minister is like Pierre Trudeau and now Justin Trudeau. Legalizing infant murder, also known as abortion. Child sacrifice happening in our land. These are the people who are causing divisions. These are the people with whom we have no peace. Brothers and sisters, but let us not be discouraged because God will crush Satan under our feet. It may look bad now, the situation may look bad, but our job is to be faithful. We depend on God. And so, we turn back to this hope that God is sovereign over all things. He will not let anything happen without His permission. And we have this hope in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, which is able to establish you, as it says, according to my Gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. is able to establish you, is able to make you stand according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages past. You see, that is what a mystery is, something that was kept secret in the past, but now is manifested by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the eternal God. So we need to, by the way, we need to have a proper definition of this word, mystery. Some people think that mystery is just something we can't really understand. And although there's truth that when it comes to the things of God, we'll never completely know all about it or all of it because God is infinite. But here, mystery is something that was kept secret in the past, but now is revealed for us, for all nations, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been made known to all nations, leading to the obedience of faith. And that is our blessing, too, that this faith has come to us through the steadfastness of others who have proclaimed the gospel down through the ages. And for that, we thank God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this time to encourage your saints with your word. I pray that you would make them strong, not just... Do not let them be conformed to this world. Help them to know the difference between when it is time to speak strong words and when it is time to comfort, to speak comforting words. Help them to know how to discern between wolves and sheep's clothing and deceived sheep. Help them to honor you in everything they do. And help them to be warriors for your kingdom, not just people who are sitting idly by as the world goes along or just sitting idly by in a church on Sunday. We ask that you do this with your power in Jesus' name. Amen.